Launched in September, the One Roar Fund will serve as a vehicle to help all 31 of Columbia's varsity athletics programs and club sports to compete at the highest level. We remain committed to providing our student athletes with the best resources available to help them achieve their goals. Although competition has been postponed, the competitive fire within our student athletes still burns as they await the call to return to athletic events. One Roar will provide our 700 plus student athletes with the necessary resources to stay in prime shape, mentally sharp, and above all, healthy and safe as we await the continuation of Ivy League play. Together, we roar as one. Welcome back to Conversations with the Staff. Tonight is our final episode before we hear from Coach Bagnoli in the town hall next week. And we are joined by none other than Greg Skold, our offensive assistant. Greg, thank you for joining us tonight. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate being here. So Greg, Greg spent three seasons as the uh, tight ends fullbacks coach and video coordinator at Trinity. Uh, he was also offensive line and tight ends coach at uh, Wor Worcester Polytechnic Institute. That's a tough one for me to say. And then he, uh, he interned in football ops at Union College, where he actually also spent his four-year college career. So, Greg, let's get right into the questions. Um, and, and just for, for the alums and the fans who are watching who, who don't know, can you kind of explain your role to them and what you, know, what you do on a day-to-day -day basis for the football team? Sure. So I do a lot of kind of the behind the scenes stuff for the offense. Um, the biggest responsibility is uh, the offensive film. So um, doing some advanced scouting of who we're going to play the next week, breaking down that opponent's defense, kind of what their base fronts, coverages, um, who are their better players. So when we come in Sunday and start preparing for that opponent, we have that information um, ready to go and able to kind of have some information on, on what the defense is and kind of speed the, the rest of the guys on staff up to who this defense is, who are their better players, what are their coverages that they run. Um, and then addition also, what are we doing successfully as an offense? Um, you know, what are some of our tendencies? Are we lining up in a particular formation and only doing one thing um, and having that information? So we know that what the opposing defense is also looking at. Um, so really working within that, that film space to generate that data so that we have um, tendencies and, and um, you know, different things that we do well that um, could be exposed or, or things that the defense does that, that we could potentially um, expose. Um, and then from there, just helping with the weekly game plans, you know, how, how to scheme people up and then um, coaching the tight ends um, along with Coach Fabish, and then running the uh, defensive scout team during the week, during the practice. Well, you, you know, you, you got your hands in, in a lot of different uh, areas of the program, and, and obviously your position and the defensive counterpart is, uh, is critical. Um, let, let's hop into uh, recruiting a little bit because you, you, you do some of that too, um, and you mentioned that you, you help coach the tight ends with Coach Fabish. Uh, what are some things that you look for in, in a tight end recruit uh, when you're recruiting for Columbia? Sure. So obviously the, the measurables is the first thing. 
Um, you know, a guy who's a certain height, a certain weight, um, you know, we're not looking for that five, seven, 150 pound tight end. So, you know, how those guys are um, with their measurables, you know, how fast are they? Um, and then kind of their movement skills along with it. Can they change direction? Can they drop their hips? But the tight end position is so unique in the fact that, um, you know, you need to block like an offensive tackle, but you need to also need to catch passes like a receiver. So really finding guys who have the tools to do to do both of those things. Um, so obviously as a receiver, you know, can you catch the ball? Can you are you dynamic with the ball in your hands? Can you do something after the catch? Do you go down on first contact? Um, are all things that that we're looking for as a receiver. And then, you know, as an offensive lineman, um, you know, how are your feet on contact? Are you able to drop and get underneath people? Are you, are you flexible to, to you know, um, create leverage in the run game? Um, and then ultimately it comes down to, you know, your toughness and finish is really what separates the, the best guys. So, um, you know, when you catch the ball, are you fighting for those extra yards? When you're blocking somebody, are you looking for a pancake? Are you looking for a knockdown? Um, and those are really what separates the the good guys from the great guys. Is really that that toughness and, and finish. Awesome. So you know, obviously, it's a pretty dynamic position. You're asking tight ends to do a lot of different things. Do you have any uh, like favorite drills to to run through the with the tight ends during practice to get them ready for for those opportunities and games? Yeah, I do. Um, so obviously my background was an offensive lineman. So um, have a strong belief and you need to run the ball to, to be a successful offense. So that's something that we're definitely going to do at the tight end position. Um, kind of long story, but, um, you know, when I first started playing offensive line, I was undersized and you'd go to these camps and you would realize, you know, in order for you to be a successful offensive lineman, even if you're undersized, you need to play with great technique and you need to be fundamentally sound. Um, I used to go to Rutgers football camps as a little kid. Um, you know, I would be a, a, so, a freshman there going against seniors. Um, and the guy who's the offensive line coach at the time at Rutgers was Kyle Flood. Phenomenal offensive line coach. Went on to go NFL, Alabama, Texas, the whole deal. And the thing that he would always talk about was if you take t- the first two steps are good and you play with good leverage, you can block anybody. Um, so, you know, as a 200-pound offensive lineman, you realize, hey, if I take – two good steps and I play with good leverage and I get underneath the guy who's 280 pounds, I can block them. And you kind of have that eye opening experience. Um, and that's something that we preach to our guys is the importance of the first two steps in the block um, and the importance of the leverage of, of where you fit on that guy. Um, so my favorite drill that we do um, is kind of our kick and cutoff drill. So our base run play as an offense was inside zone. And these are the two blocks that we would ask the tight ends to do on that play. Um, and it's really putting the whole block together. So obviously we drill the first step of the block, the second step of the block, the fit of the block, the finish of the block. But this is really the drill that puts all of that together um, and incorporates two tight ends and asks them to go through the whole progression of the block. Um, and obviously being our top run play, um, it's something that is going to show up a lot on on Saturday. So um, that is definitely my, my favorite drill to do. Um, kind of putting the whole whole play together um, and seeing who can who can execute the technique. Got to be able to block for sure. So you, you know you you mentioned you you went to Rutgers camp. You you grew up across the bridge in New Jersey. Uh, so you've been around New York City. You haven't been around Columbia quite as much. But is there anything in your time here that that's really surprised you about Columbia or New York and and just being in this great city? Yeah. So um, the biggest thing for me about New York is when you first go to New York, you go to, you know, the tourist traps, you go to the places where everybody is. So even growing up in North Jersey, you know, you go to Times Square, Madison Square Garden, Yankee Stadium, Top of the Rock, all those those great places, which are fun. But you get the the notion that, oh, that's how the whole city is, that it's packed with with people and it's, you know, chaotic the whole time. Um, and really, it's not. Um and it's kind of cool for me to experience the different neighborhoods within New York City um, and how they have their different culture and their different feel to it. So, you know, financial district is a lot different than Soho. Uh, Little Italy is a lot different than Harlem, um, you know, and, and exploring those different neighborhoods and, and seeing the different culture um, and seeing how everything isn't 
hustle and bustle and everyone's on top of each other, that there is different parts that are, are a little bit slower and a little bit more unique. Um, and there's so many different neighborhoods that it's impossible to explore all of them and all the different nooks and crannies. But something that I personally enjoyed is, you know, going to those dif different places and experiencing those different restaurants and um, things within those, those neighborhoods. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it feels impossible to go see all the different neighborhoods, yeah. especially, you know, you got five boroughs, but you mentioned trying all the different restaurants. And one of the fun questions I've been asking everyone is, is what are your favorite places or what's your favorite place to eat in the city? Do you, you have a list as a former offensive lineman? Yeah. So, right. So as a former offensive lineman, I, I definitely eat, um, not as much anymore, but um, when I do like to indulge, it's definitely pizza. Um, and obviously New York City, pizza capital of the world. Um, so the best is Lucali in Brooklyn, but my favorite is John's on Bleecker. Um, coal fire, brick pizza, down in the West Village. You can't beat it. Awesome place to, to start your night or take a break uh, halfway through. Get some awesome pizza, nice thin crust. Um, like I said, coal fire, just, just can't beat New York City pizza. That may be the best answer we've received. I appreciate very, very it. Very <laughs> complete. You knew what you were talking about. No questions. John's Pizza on Bleecker. I love it. So you've been you've been coaching here for three years now. Um, obviously, we didn't play this past season, but do you have any uh, Columbia football memories that that stand out in your mind? Yeah, so the obviously the Cornell win in, in 2018 with Mikey uh, with the return and then Harvard in 2019, the overtime game were two great team memories. But for me, uh, the 2019 season um, with the tight ends was was really memorable for me um, with Rory Schlageter and Ben Hill both being senior guys and, and watching their seasons and, and how successful um, they were. And it's kind of a, a tale of two different stories. Um, we'll start with Rory, um, who had the goal going into the season to be an all league player and awesome to see his, his day to day effort, um, bringing that type of intensity of I want to be an all league player to practice to game week, no matter what happened, you know, we won, we lost, whatever it may be. And just putting that whole body of work together. Um, and obviously he, has made some incredible plays in his career. The the two homecoming, you know, the homecoming catch at Penn in 17, the homecoming catch against Penn in 19, when he jumped over the kid, the Harvard catch in 2019 that set up the touchdown. So he's been a part of so many big uh, moments in Columbia football, um, but cool to see him have that, that payoff and be named an all league player. And then similar Ben Hill, um, unfortunately broke his foot early in the year, but had that, same mentality where Ben broke his foot, but didn't miss a meeting all year. He showed up to every meeting um, and would give his input, would give his coaching points to the other guys in the room, to the young guys, to Rory of things that has worked for him in the past. Um, and really those two guys have been invaluable for the tight end room of, of building that culture of, you know, coming in every day and working hard. And, and this is what it takes to be an all elite guy. So for me personally, that that was my favorite memory was that 2019 season coaching Rory Schlagner and Ben Hill. Absolutely. And, and as you said, uh, Rory got first team all league that season and his goals paid off. So uh, my, my last question, uh, and this is a fun one. You may have an answer. You may not. But do you, do you have any special talents or hobbies that we may not know about? Um. So I guess my new hobby was I ran into a little pickle during quarantine. Uh, I'm a big cold brew guy. And in my apartment in New York, you drop down in one corner is a blue bottle, one corner is Starbucks. So pandemic hit. And I was a little uncertain as far as where I was going to get my cold brew. So I started making my own, um, went through two different systems, tried a bunch of different beans. But that's kind of my, my latest hobby is I, I you know, set my ratio. I mix around with the beans put it in the fridge and then next morning, see what you got. So that's probably my latest hobby that I've, I've been into is, is making my own cold brew. How, how many hours are you, uh, are you let it sit in the fridge? Do you have a, a time set or? I usually put it in around three in the afternoon okay. and then I'm, I'm ready to go in the morning. So. Perfect. 
you and I can exchange notes on that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right. Well, in typical fashion, I've, I've let you guys kind of close it out and say anything you have to say to, to our alumni and fans who are, are tuned in tonight or going to watch this later. So thanks. Thanks again for, uh, for stopping by and, and the floor is yours and uh, we'll, we'll see you next week. Yeah. The, the thing to me about the uh, Columbia alums is how accessible they are. Um, and obviously they give great support, but the thing that, is amazing to me is, is how active they are. Um, you know, some other places you only see them one or two times a year, but our Columbia football alums are at almost every home game. Um, they come to recruiting events. They'll take you out to dinner. Um, and it's not just for the coaches and staff, but it's for our players as well, that they're always there. They're always accessible. You know who these people are. It's not like you're in the woods somewhere where they show up for homecoming and maybe for, you know, a recruiting event. Um, it's really how accessible they are. And, and that support is, is unmatched anywhere I've ever been. Um, and I know it's been a, a long two years, but I know for a staff and our players, we're ready to go. We're ready to play some football. And I hope our alums are just as excited. And we're, we're looking forward to seeing you in the fall. Next week, join us live with Coach Bagno 